Welcome back. This is episode three of my UC Q&A series. Today is dedicated to answering all the miscellaneous questions that current freshmen have submitted to me. As always, check the description for links to previous episodes so that you don't miss out on anything. The questions today cover a really wide range of topics, so I'm going to jump right into it. College is all about making connections and clubs are a really great way to do this. Also, extracurriculars are a great way to de-stress and have something fun outside of your academics you can look forward to. Additionally, clubs are a wonderful way to pursue an interest that might not necessarily be related to your field of study. So let's say that you're a STEM major, but you love history, and you might not have room in your course schedule for a lot of history classes. Instead, you can look on Highlander Link and see what clubs there are that pertain to history. And so in your free time, you can still get to spend an hour here or there to have fun and learn about something that you're passionate about. I personally really like the dining hall here. UCR, top-notch food, like the cooks here, everybody who makes desserts, like everybody in the dining team is amazing. It was different food from what I was constantly eating back at home. So it was nice to have a little change here and there and have a lot of options. It is buffet style. So you can eat as much as you want for a meal swipe. And also with the meal plan, I recommend the Highlander 150. It is the best option for freshmen. Just because um, if you get the unlimited, you get more meal swipes and I don't think you really want to just have meal swipes. You should also have dining dollars because dining dollars helps you get um, not necessarily free food, but like you don't have to spend your own out of pocket money to go like to Scotty's, which is like a version of 7-Eleven. Or if you want to go to the Glenmore Market and you want to get some food there, you can use dining dollars for that. Also, you can pay for Starbucks with dining dollars. So if you like your Starbucks in the morning, you can be include it can be included now into your dining plan. This is obviously a biggie right now, considering the UC's recent announcement that fall quarter might go back to in-person instruction. I will link the UCR coronavirus website in the description because they're the main source for protocol information that's ongoing right now. But as far as my understanding of how UCR has been handling COVID, there are currently students living on campus if they elected to do so. Essential facilities like the dining halls and the barn are open for food pickup, but it's my understanding that everything is just grab and go. All the dorms have been converted to single status, meaning that even if you elected to choose a double or a triple room on your housing contract, it's only one person to a room for safety reasons. You're still charged at the double or the triple rate though, which is really cool of UCR to do. The dorm common areas are closed. As a current housing policy, you're also not supposed to hang out in groups in your rooms so that you're not infecting other students. Staff and students on campus have to complete a daily wellness check survey where they can potentially report any symptoms they're experiencing. Also, students and staff periodically undergo COVID testing. There are spit and go stations on campus. All on-campus events and social gatherings are canceled right now. For example, every year we have events like block party and spring splash and all of these events have been moved virtually when available. The gym is closed. All pools associated with the gym or the UCR apartments are also closed. Essentially, everything not deemed as an essential function per the state of California's guidelines is closed on campus. Facilities like the Academic Resource Center and the library are all being facilitated online. The actual buildings on campus are closed, so you can't go to the library physically to study. However, there is a textbook pickup system, almost like a fast food waiting line where you show up to the library and someone brings the books out to your car. ASUCR has done a similar process with merch giveaway events the last quarter or two. I believe this started during fall quarter. You drive to UCR, wait in a line in parking lot 40 to pick up free stuff on a first come first serve basis. Research on campus has essentially come to a standstill unless the faculty member was able to receive exceptional approval. Some research has been moved online. I looked into this last quarter and it seemed like some professors in the humanities fields were conducting virtual research. That's not really possible in STEM fields, it seems like, because of the fact that you can't bring the heavy equipment from UCR to their homes. As far as classes, we know obviously classes have been online the last few quarters, the only exception being a small number of clinical courses in the School of Medicine and some one-to-one -one courses such as individual study at the instructor's discretion. Mostly this seems like it's graduate school related stuff, not so much undergraduate. Additionally, student employment has also moved online for all student workers except the food services department. If you want to know more in depth about what it's been like to work remotely, check out the first episode of the series about how to get an on-campus job where I talked all about my personal experience working remotely. 
If you have very specific questions, you can email the financial aid office at finaid at ucr.edu, especially if you have supporting documentation or screenshots that you need to show to a representative, emailing them is a really good method. In non-campus closure times, you could wait in line at the Highlander one-stop shop to speak with someone about financial aid matters. That's suspended as of right now, but I did that a lot. My biggest advice is to not call them on the phone. They have notoriously slow wait times if they pick up at all. One time during my freshman year, I was left on hold for six hours and no one picked up. So my insider secret is to use ScottyBot. It's a new AI chatbot that can put you in touch with a representative in real time. And usually you'll be connected to someone in just a few minutes because it seems like either no one uses ScottyBot or no one knows about it. So that's my biggest insider tip. So what I do know is that UCR received a shipment of 400 Moderna vaccines on January 20th. This was after an initial shipment of about 100 Moderna vaccines was delivered to student health services earlier in January. That was to begin inoculating frontline healthcare staff. What I also know is that the university has registered with the state of California to be part of the distribution network for vaccines. Once UCR has vaccinated those in phase 1A who wish to be vaccinated, it will begin the next phase of the vaccination plan for UCR employees and graduate students who are in phase 1B. This is in addition to UCR health patients 65 or older and those patients with specific underlying medical conditions. This is all directly from a UCR press release and I'll link this article below. As far as what's going to happen with fall quarter if they try to transition things back to in-person classes, it is my personal suspicion that students might be offered the vaccine if they can't get it off campus. It might be a mandate to receive the vaccine in order to return to classes. And all of this is just conjecture that students haven't been told yet. So I'm just as much in the dark as you are, but I'm hoping that we should get some more updates in the coming month or so. I know there's a lot of uh, pre-med students that come into UCR. Um, I'm personally a biology major. I would definitely, if you're a pre-med student or interested in any sort of field in the medical in the medical field, um, definitely look up UCR Med School Pipeline programs. They are amazing programs. Um, there's different th there's different ones. Like there's some that are only in the summer, or some that are throughout the year, or some that you're just like a part of um, throughout the year. And they have like certain events that you can attend and everything. Um, and yeah, like they connect you to what's going on with UCR School of Medicine. They connect you to um, programs where you can serve UCR's mission, UCR School of Medicine's mission, um, and serving. Um, populations with health disparities definitely don't feel behind like there are so many programs and don't feel pressure to do all of them because sometimes something is not for you um, the ucs are really heavy on research and being part of a research team it's it's a great experience like you learn so much and you get to like talk to professors and a bunch of like upperclassmen and all that um, but it's not for everybody not everyone likes it Someone submitted a question about myself and not UC related, so I thought that that was really sweet. Being an environmental engineering major, I love anything having to do with nature. My recent gardening endeavor, I guess you can call it, has been to grow more indoor plants. These are plumeria flowers, and I have several of those back on the table over there as well. This is a future lemon tree, so just stuff like that. I like decorating my space with plants. It makes me feel calm, helps me feel grounded during class just to be more connected to nature. For incoming freshmen, you don't have to be best friends with your roommates. That's, I think, a lot of, like, like a misconception that a lot of people who dorm believe, like, I have to be the biggest friends with them. But you don't. You have to be acquaintances. And if you feel like you really connect, then you can, like, flourish a beautiful friendship from that. For me, I kept it very uh, respectful and I felt like I got that respect backwards. The biggest pro, in my opinion, is that dorming helps you feel more integrated into the UCR campus culture. Attending res hall events with your hallmates and with your roommates is a really good way to bond and meet other people. But aside from just making friends, it goes deeper than that because it's common for a lot of freshmen to feel overwhelmed when they first come to college. Some students cope with this by socially isolating themselves. They'll try to just attend classes and then come back to their rooms and basically only come out to eat. 
but having a roommate or multiple roommates really helps you break out of your shell because you feel like you're not going through this alone. You know that your roommates are just as overwhelmed as you are at the beginning and you and your roommates can tackle this together by branching out together. And I feel like this is something that commuters or students living off campus in their first year don't really get to experience because of the fact that they don't have a built-in friend network like you get when you're living in the dorms. Another pro of living in the dorms is it helps you adjust to the responsibility level you need to be a college student. When you're dorming, you have a meal plan and you're only a shorter walk away from your classes. So though it might not seem like cooking or driving to school is a big responsibility, when coupled with the stress of classes and exams, it's really helpful to not have to worry about grocery shopping or getting a flat tire on your way to school. It's a good transition from high school where maybe your parents woke you up every morning and made you breakfast and took you to school. You still have some familiar comforts to slowly ease you into that great responsibility level that you need. One con of dorming is that the dorms are expensive. Lothian is about $15,000 per year. When compared to off-campus apartments or even the UCR apartments for sophomores and above, the dorms are the most expensive housing option. When I speak to commuters, this is usually the biggest reason why they decided to commute. The only other con that I can think of is that you have to share your space, both your room and the shared facilities like the bathroom. So if you're a more private person, you might not like this. Personally, I didn't mind sharing my space. It was a little inconvenient when people tried to shower at the same time or when people played music while they showered, but I wouldn't say that this is a huge con. It's more just a mild annoyance. So if you don't want to buy your own printer, because that's a lot of money, there are computer labs where you can go and print stuff. Not necessarily much now, but during my first year, I had to print a lot of stuff. And within the $12 of credit they give you, you can print a lot of stuff. So you don't have to worry about it running out. I don't think that there's a way to evaluate across the board. It really varies from campus to campus. What I've seen and heard is that usually it depends on how lively the cities surrounding each UC campus are. If you have a more lively city like Los Angeles or San Diego, the more party heavy they are. For UCR in particular, Riverside is pretty much a dead zone for social activity in general. There's no fraternity or sorority row at UCR, so if you're banking on a big Greek party scene, I wouldn't say it's like you see in the movies. Unless you have a car, or if you want to Uber or Lyft out of Riverside, the campus itself is not party heavy. However, for a school like UC San Diego, for example, there seems to be a heavier party scene. And like I said, a lot of it depends on locale. At every campus, it balances out with academics as well. For UC schools in general, I'd say don't expect it to be 24-7 party central. UC schools have a high academic standard, so if you're curious about a specific school's party scene, you can pretty much Google anything you want and get horror stories from students at every campus. Living with my family is really nice because like I have like I have like my family support and everything. Um, However, I always, my biggest fear was like that I'd be missing out on dorm life since it's so like prevalent in your first year. So what I did was I joined a learning community my first year and that was like the best thing I could do. I met a lot of my closest friends there. Um, I joined clubs like um, the SRC, if you're interested in any sports or anything, like join a club, like I met, I met great people and you just meet like people of all kinds of ages, majors and all that. Um, your learning community it's cool because like everybody there has the same major and you're in the same classes so it's it's way easier what i did is like i made friends with like commuters as well as dormers and um, when you're friends with the dormers you know like you get to experience that dorm life by spending time with them I covered this in my housing video, so to keep this response short and sweet, yes, absolutely, I would recommend dorming. I loved living in Lothian, and I would do it again in a heartbeat if I could. My big recommendation is to use the Academic Resource Center's online tutoring. They offer it in a lot of math and science subjects like calculus and chemistry. And also, aside from just general tutoring, you can attend something called Supplemental Instruction Sections. Supplemental Instruction Sections are held by TAs that are registered to a specific class, such as General Chemistry or Organic Chemistry. And they hold supplemental lectures that are supposed to help reinforce the knowledge that you learn in lecture. They can emphasize something that maybe the professor didn't go very in-depth into. They can just give 
have a bunch of practice problems in topics that students think are the most difficult. I've used them before for general chemistry and organic chemistry. And if you're in a learning community, a lot of times you'll be mandated to attend SI sessions. I think that they're really helpful, especially if you're someone who might be intimidated to stop a lecture or to ask questions in class because of the fact that the TAs are very approachable and everything is there just to help students. So it's a very open session where you can ask questions back and forth. I talked about this a lot on my housing video, which is on my channel, but to summarize, some of them have included utilities and some don't, some come furnished and some don't, um, some are more expensive than others. There's a lot of different layouts that you can look at the housing website and you can kind of see if you want to have a roommate, if you want to have multiple roommates, or if you want to live by yourself, but in general, they're good. Yeah, the UCR apartments are really good. I have a vlog on my channel of the very first time that I visited the gardens with some of my favorite spots. I love the turtle pond and one of my favorite botanic garden events is the plant sale. I bought a few plants my freshman year to spruce up my dorm room that I still have today. And that's gonna wrap it up for this video. I hope I was able to answer your questions thoroughly. Like I've said before, you can message me on Instagram at any time if you have other questions. I like being here as a resource. Please subscribe so you can get notified when the next video about networking and making friends goes up and I'll see you next time.